You're listening to KEXP. You can find us at 90.3 FM in Seattle. We're streaming live online around the world at kexp.org. I'm Cheryl Waters, host of the Midday Show, and so excited to have Steve Gunn and the Outliners live today. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, our pleasure. We're big fans. You have so much music for Thanks. us to enjoy. Thank you. That's for sure. And a beautiful new record. And you're going to play songs from that today? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here's Steve Gunn and the Outliners, music from the new album, Eyes on the Lines.
Uh, Steve Gunn and the Outliners live on KEXP. My mind and my body right now are just bursting with joy, being enveloped with that live sound, one of my favorite records of the year, Eyes on the Lines. That was fantastic. Tonight, this band playing at Barboza here in Seattle. Highly recommend this live show. Lots of guitars, and we want to get those in tune. That's a beautiful guitar, actually. That looks like there's sap right on there. Plank of wood from the forest. It came from a burning building, actually. Oh, my.
Steve Gunn and the Outliners live on KEXP. Man, you guys sound so fantastic. <laughs> so great to have you in studio today. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Steve, you are an incredible guitar player, and clearly you love playing the guitar. And I'm curious to know how that passion grew in you. I, it uh -huh. sounds like you spent a lot of time, you take the craft very seriously. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I started like many other kids taking lessons and I was interested in kind of just playing three chord punk stuff and it just sort of grew kind of slowly. Um, as I got older, I got more interested in all different kinds of music and you know, I was lucky enough to live close to Philadelphia, which has a really rich community there. And, you know, there were a lot of different bands and labels and there was great college stations and independent radio and things like that. So you seem was, like a kid who spent a lot of time in record stores. Oh yeah, definitely. I think we're going to four record stores today. So <laughs> still do. <laughs> We've got some great ones here in yeah. Seattle. Yeah. Um, every time I turn around, you're releasing a record. If it's not on your own, you're collaborating with someone. You really seem to enjoy uh, collaborating with others. And it seems to me that it's just the joy of playing. You just always want to be playing. And I know you moved to New York some years ago. And it sounds like you found a lot of like-minded people. I did, yeah. Um, yeah, I, you know, I moved to New York from Philadelphia. And I had some, some people that I knew there that I was playing with. And, you know, that... Those cities are very close, so there was a lot of cross crossing between both cities. And you know, I met people like Jason, who's playing bass here. He owns a recording studio called Black Dirt Recording, and that's where I made like most of my music. And we kind of connected a bunch of years ago. And he comes from this whole sort of amazing community of musicians. And you know, I met a lot of people, and I'm pretty grateful. Speaking of Jason and the recording of the album, the production is magnificent on Eyes on the Lines. Thank you. Great job, guys. Steve, I know um, that you started making music just in your bedroom at home and that you kind of, seems like you've taken like little steps along the way and learned as you've gone along. And I'm curious how, sure. how that has happened for you. Well, I think it was sort of a long process and Jason, of course, is a big help. Um, and, you know, Nathan and Jim here who are an important part of the music, um, you know, they offer a lot of advice. And I feel like every album that we've made, I try to improve and I think we're all sort of working towards something and there's a little bit of like, you know, kind of forward trajectory with the records and we're excited to keep, keep it going, you know. It's wonderful to hear so many sounds in your music. You mentioned that you started off as a punk rocker yeah. when you were a kid. I know in interviews, I hear people ask you over and over if jazz is an influence. Mm -hmm. They seem to hear that in your playing. I know that you're very influenced by Indian classical mm -hmm. music. You just really seem to be a sponge and yeah. taking it from wherever and probably from the people that you work with as well. Sure, definitely. I think, you know, all of us are really deep music appreciators and we're record nerds. <laughs> so that's kind of like be between books and records, that's, that takes up about 90, <laughs> 93% of our <laughs> conversations. You seem so. a bit like a rolling stone. You seem to be touring a lot, and I know that that can have its challenges and be grueling yeah. at times, but you really seem to enjoy it, it sounds like. I try, yeah. I do my best. Um, you know, I love traveling. I love meeting people, and, you know, I feel really lucky to be able to, to play, be able to play music, and, you know, I don't, I'm trying not to take it for granted, and, you know, I love, like, you know, just moving along and playing every night and getting better and, you know, that kind of thing. Speaking of traveling and meeting people, um, Eyes on the Lines sounds like a book of short stories in uh -huh. music. And I'm curious where those stories come from and what they're about. And if you're in the stories or if you're just the narrator. Uh, I, I sort of like to leave myself out of it a little bit to kind of leave them open for interpretation. You know, I think this album particularly, I didn't want it to be overly kind of confessional and I wanted to kind of create a lot of imagery with the words and tell a story that isn't specifically about me. I like to, to sing and about other people, about characters, you know, who, who like perhaps are in the kind of peripheries of society. And sometimes I think that those are the sort of more, most interesting stories that a lot of particularly sing, songwriters don't, you know, um, sing about or, they, you know, they, a lot of them are just singing about themselves and try to, you know, of course I, I'm placed in certain parts of the song, but you might not necessarily know that, you know. Speaking of singing, you have a great voice, but Thank for you. a long time you were just the guitar player. Was it weird to bring your voice out in your uh, music? 
weird, yeah, I think. <laughs> it was just, for me, it, it took a while. Um, it took me until I started getting opportunities to tour in Europe mostly, uh, solo. So I was, for a number of years, I was going to Europe and just traveling on trains, um, you know, with an acoustic. And, you know, I was playing in rooms. Sometimes they weren't amplified. So I really had to learn quickly how to start projecting my voice and not, not hide behind, you know, a turned up sort of PA system. So, you know, it took, it took a number of years of me just, I was never really a natural singer per se. It must have felt a little bit safer doing it like overseas, away from That's, people that yeah, you know. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so I didn't know anyone, so I could just embarrass myself. Well, this is know. one of my favorite records Thank of you the so year. Much. It's so beautiful. It's great to hear. Eyes on the Line. Steve Gunn and the Outliners are playing at Barboza tonight. Highly recommend that show. And actually, uh, you're playing that guitar again. I hope you were not involved in that story of the fire. Do you know the story behind that? I do. There's a guitar maker named Rick Kelly in New York City, and he owns a shop called Carmine Street. And he does, he does a lot of like wood excavation, particularly in like the five points older parts of New York City. And there's all this incredible wood that, you know, people, construction workers just put out on the street and has a real history. And he goes and brings it back to his shop and, and makes guitars out of them. And this guitar particularly was a place, was, was from a building that had been on fire on the Bowery. And he like rented a van, went over there and took some planks and made a bunch of guitars. So there's some sort of special story. I wasn't running out of the building, but you know, it was reclaimed. It would have been just thrown away. So this, this guy's making amazing guitars. And, it's you beautiful. Thank you. You, is that what you were drawn to? Or with, you well, have a lot of guitars. You're probably looking for a certain sound. Yeah, I was. I mean, I like this sort of style. And you know, I've been a fan of this guy's store for a long time. And I finally, he finally convinced me to put a down payment on one. And I was like, all right, fine. Because I kept asking him, said, just give me some, give me a couple hundred bucks. I'll start it and then we'll work it out. So Sounds like he had to twist your arm. A little bit, <laughs> yeah. Steve Gunn and the Outliners live on KEXP and more music from Eyes on the Lines.
watching the scenes to know What you do doing, where you going Where you end up when the morning comes He does the same thing, he likes to wander Whose direction and go back home Steve Gunn and the Outliners live on KEXP. Jim, Steve getting all the glory because he put his name on the record, but you oh, yeah. sound pretty fine on that guitar as well. Thank you. <laughs> you have a wonderful band, Nathan on drums and Jason on bass and twisting the dials behind this beautiful record. Steve Gunn and the Outliners playing at Barboza tonight. Once again, the new album called Eyes on the Lines. The song's called Ark.
So beautiful. Thank you. Steve Gunn and the Outliners live on KEXP. And you guys have fun record shopping today. Thanks so much. We'll see you at Barboza later tonight. Yes. Great. Thank Thanks you for having us. Thank you so much. You've got to tune to KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.